gang, this lesson is going to be all about metal textures. So metal textures are one of those things that everybody wants to learn how to do. And the cool thing about digital art is you can get to the same place with very, very different techniques. So what I'm going to show you in this lesson, we're going to show you how to do a grayscale metal texture so that it lends itself to ultimate flexibility if you want to change your mind, say, and do a blue metal versus kind of a patinaed metal. So in your downloads, I've given you everything you need to be successful. And I would say on difficulty scale, this is probably going to be a three out of five. So you need to know a little bit about the basics, but it's not terribly complicated. So in your downloads, you've got metal texture grayscale palette. So go ahead and import that. If you don't know how to import palettes, look it up on Google or find the video we have on it. Now, also in your brushes, I've given you a brush pack, metal texture brushes. And these are the brushes that I've modified and worked with and that I will be working with in this tutorial. So you got the brush pack, you've got the palette, and you also have two images. So example one and example three. Now I pulled these because I really liked the color of this particular sheen of metal, but I liked the chunky, grainy, grungy texture of this metal. So I have pulled them both. These, by the way, both came from Paxels.com, awesome site for free graphics. And I set up my workspace in 2,000 pixel by 2,000 pixel sizes. Again, if you're working in textures, 2,000 by 2,000 gives you a big enough texture to be effective if you export it and then use it in larger areas. And also, I've then put these two pictures up here on these layers. So if you've got your project set up, let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'm in Pixel Persona. Let's go ahead and create three pixel layers. One, two, three. Make sure your pictures stay at the top. And now let's rename this. Let's call this highlight. We'll call this middle one base layer. And we'll call this one shadow. Okay, what we're doing, we're making a base layer sandwich. So we're going to play with blend modes here. Highlight. I want you to come over here and I want you to set the highlight layer to overlay blend mode. Base layer, I want you to set that to multiply and we're going to leave the shadow layer at a normal blending mode. This is key. It doesn't work if you don't do this. Now, we're going to begin with the base layer because every decision I make, I want to evaluate based on what it does to the color. So let's go here grab our rectangular marquee tool, select the base layer, grab our flood fill tool, come over to the swatches, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull this color off my swatch panel, and I tap, and now I have a flood filled rectangle. Let's go ahead and deselect. All right, cool, problem solved, problem staying solved. Now, let's begin on the shadow layer. So with the shadow layer selected, we're now going to come into our brushes. We're going to come over to our toolbox and we're going to grab a brush. Now I'm going to grab this dry ink stain brush. I'm going to go ahead and crank this up a little bit. The key to getting good textures like this is making it random. And in swatches, I'm now exclusively going to use the grayscale portion of the palette. I do not want to use the color. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab my darker gray. And now you can play with the opacity, the flow, the hardness. I like to run my flow right around 50% because I don't quite know what I want to do with it. So I don't want to go all in on it when I don't quite know how it's going to work. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to crank up my brush size a little bit. And then I'm going to turn down my flow just a little. And now I'm going to take a big sweeping arc through this thing here. You see what I'm doing with it? I'm creating a little bit of interest and I'm breaking up the pattern. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and shrink down my brush a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to keep the same brush. I'm going to come to my mid grays. And I'm going to go through and just fill in some spots. All right. Cool. So what I'm doing, I'm breaking up some of this pattern. And now I come over to another brush. And let's see what other kind of brushes we got. What kind of funky stuff we got over here. I'm going to go to the Spray 5. 
I'm going to crank this thing up, and I'm going to play with it to see what it does for me. All right. Now, the flow is down way low, so I'm going to crank it up just a little bit. Okay. I really like the look that's giving, but I want to add in some dark, so I'm going to go all the way to black now but not in a lot of areas. I'm going to put in some areas of visual interest here. All right. Come over here. Now, this is not straight black. This is a little bit different. Ooh, that is way too big. So I'm going to control Z it. And I like the look of it, but I almost want it kind of in a mid gray. Let's go over here. There we go. All right. Cool. So if it's a little bit too much for you, you can always crank down the flow a little bit. There you go. All right. Perfect. Now we're going to do one more brush here and I'm going to work with this. What do we call this one here? We're going to call this the grunge three brush. I'm going to go ahead and turn this up, but I don't know what it's going to do. So I'm going to work kind of in the middle ground and test it out. Let's make sure it's what we want it to be here. Oh, that looks nice. Okay, just a little bit on that there. I think we're in pretty good shape. Okay, so looking pretty good. Looking like it's a little bit dark. We still haven't put the highlights in, but that's completely fine. So now let's go ahead and the coolest brush that I kind of gave you here. Take a look at this metal texture brush here. This is what's called the Paint 3 brush. And now let's go back into our swatches and let's pick something relatively dark and let's crank this bad boy up. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch to my tablet. You don't have to. And the reason that I'm switching to my tablet is now I want to create these machining marks. You see how I'm kind of creating these machining marks around it? This is part of this illusion here. And it's really showing kind of where this machining happened on this piece. So I'm using my tablet. You can absolutely go ahead and use something different. You can use your mouse. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose something probably in a light. And let's see what that does to it. Okay. Lightens it up a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in a little bit of visual interest on it here. And then I'm going to go ahead and one last thing on this lower layer. I'm coming back into my brushes and I'm coming up to my spray. I'm going to crank this bad boy up a little bit. And I'm breaking up the pattern. So I want to increase the flow a little bit. Yeah. Let's try that. And now you see what this is doing because it's in the multiply layer. All right, so that lower level, I think looks pretty good. So now let's go to the highlight level. Now it's going to behave substantially different. I've still got my brush selected. I'm still working in this area. Now let's go ahead and pull this color of gray and let's see what happens now with this. Notice it breaks it up substantially different. So now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna raise up my brush a little bit and I'm gonna touch on these corners here. Good deal. All right. Now I'm bringing in my brush again and I'm working on the highlights. Now I'm going to go big old white, right? I'm going to go bright white. So this thing is going to be fairly substantial. I'm cranking up my brush. And now, yep, bringing in some of that there. That looks really good. Now we can go ahead and we can kill these examples here if we want to. And we can see kind of how we've got these figured out. Okay. And now the last thing that I might do, I really like this portion here. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of these in. All right. So now you can go ahead and you can play with the highlights of these. All right. So. 
once we get through these, you can definitely go through and play with the blend mode of these. Maybe you don't like the overlay. Maybe you want it maybe a little bit brighter, a little bit bolder. You can take a look at things like screen. You can take a look at the addition. I like the overlay mode for this. You can certainly look at lighten. Or you can take them out completely. And there's a lot of blend mode tricks you can use. I like the overlay in terms of getting me something that I can actually work with. Let's say the base layer you want to change. Let's say that I want to make it an HSL adjustment. Come down to your adjustments, find your HSL, and now if you wanted to make it, say, a different type of metal, you could go through and change the hue of the metal substantially. Let's say that you wanted to make it maybe a little cooler. You could saturate it down a little bit, highly saturate it, whatever you wanted to do if you're doing like a robot. So the grayscale rendering really lends itself really well to working through some of your metal textures in order to get this look. All right, so that's the sandwich. Highlight layer in the overlay mode, base layer in the multiply mode, and shadow layer in the normal mode. All right, folks, hope you learned a little bit about metal textures. I'd like to see the ones that you made. Enjoy the brushes. Enjoy the palettes. We'll see you in the next one. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and check out our guide, Affinity Designer, the complete guide to Affinity Designer, available at the link below. All right, have a good one.